I was really hoping that you were going to start the show, Corey, with like friends in low places or something. Like just to differentiate the fact that Bryce is in front of the ship. Ah. Instead of whatever, like, Japanese shriek pop disco. He, he gave me a link. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Next episode, maybe. He's but like, we're like just no, no, we're opening with whatever, like, you know. We're, we're in some deep echo. I think we're good. Wait, no, this is it. really weird because. It's the opposite. It was for a second. I, 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 I'm going to bet it was a power cycling thing uh, where it's like it did it. Th- uh, yeah. It did a part. Dude. Uh, Corey, could you uh, just bring the the web the blink web browser off Andrew's face so I can see his beautiful visage? Four sentences. Here we go. Uh. Uh. What? Y'all ready? Let's go. Yep. Yeah. Smooth. Oh, wait, are we yeah. live? Have, have, have we been live? Oh, yeah, baby. Wait, okay. Is that not... Aren't we supposed to be no. live with our faces? We're getting there. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Like, are we live on Twitch? <laughs> I think so. Because we don't see a chat. Wait, here, let me load up. Normally, let, we let see me a lo- chat. Let me load up Twitch. Oh, we got a rookie <laughs> in the house. It says we're streaming. I don't know. Uh, there okay, we there go. we go. Bryce says we're Twitch. alive on Twitch. Right. right on. There we go. That's very yes, sweet that he showed it. up. I nailed it. <laughs> All right, we're live. We're Don't live. Give me no hard time. <laughs> no, no, I mean, this is encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we're really, we're really cheering. We for still you. do need our faces up though. <laughs> it can't just be the. Uh, yep. Hold up, we got this. Okay. There. there. We go. Whoa. Oh, oh, there we go. Yes. You know what? So, uh, um, I guess uh, you've got other things to worry about. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna alter the. Yeah, alter the deal and pray that nobody alters it any further. Uh, oh, wait, you're not Bryce. No, no, he's not. There you go. He's like, uh, 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 mom, can we get Bryce? We have Bryce at home. Bryce at home. Boom. Corey Cranfield. This, this is the store brand Bryce. Is it this is. what this is? No, no, no. He is uh, 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 the one and only uh, 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 ops man at uh, Modern Rogue HQ, uh, uh, Corey, who is uh, ably filling in while Bryce is taking a well earned uh, uh, sabbatical, right? I mean, I, for <clears throat> me, that, 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 this that, is that. like when my friend found out that his dad had like another son. <laughs> And like, you know, Brian, you've got this whole family of people there that I've never met. Like, oh, yeah, it's Corey. Everybody knows Corey. Like, oh, yeah, my secret family I never told you about. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, 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 Corey is is the only reason why I think things happen. Uh, on... in, in, in general, that, yeah. that would be a fair thing to, to do. I, 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 you know what, Corey? Um, uh, you keep on doing things. I'm going to I'm going to tweak some knobs so that I don't look like I'm the shadow man. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, nightmare. Yeah. Fighter of the day, man. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, Corey is uh, uh, a, a huge and very important part of the, uh, uh, the, the, the the modern rogue HQ world, and we are happy to have him here. And, and we hope that Bryce is uh, doing nothing, doing literally like, like like just like having a very well deserved time where he doesn't have to worry. And yet he's and yet he's here in 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 the chat because because he cares that much. 
probably in full panic I talk, mode. I talked to him last night. He's planning and scheming. He's a schemer. I he's a you. scheming. He's, yeah. he's, he's scheming. He's learning JavaScript currently. So we are just the podcast on in the background as he learns. Uh, uh, as, as <laughs> Proof he learns that JavaScript. I talked to him last night. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh! Because I know he was asking on on this on uh, uh, the show last week on whether or not what language he should learn, and uh, I, I I presume that you talked him uh, talked some sense into him and to learn JavaScript. Yeah, it's like I it's not the language I start on. It's not my bias, but it, like for anybody, just start with JavaScript because you can do so much with it. And then you go. It's not like it's not like committing to like a four year degree. Yeah. Like, well, I'm going to learn this language. It's the only one I get to learn, you know, and then that's it. And, you know, um, uh, you know. And then you yeah, can go on like, and live your life yeah. and do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, you can do, you could do, you know, you can do JavaScript. You can do Python. You can do a lot of languages. Swift, Dart, you know, it's just not like. Particularly if you're a person that just wants to make stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you just want to get things rolling. Well, it's good to have you back, Andrew. Yeah, it's been forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, it's been. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you had uh, you had some deadlines to take care of, and then some uh, conflicting well, stuff last week, right? Yeah, I had a book, and then I I had this. I was doing this uh, teaching for a hackathon that was in Germany. I mean, you know, virtually. Yeah. And uh, I had my Germans? times all screwed up. The Zegemans. That Zegemans. was great. It was a tomb, tomb.ai. They did a wonderful job. Really well done. So, I like the uh, to suspect that uh, it was actually in Austria. And when you say it was virtually in Germany, what you meant was it was almost <laughs> in Germany, yeah. but not Could quite be any there. part of <laughs> any part of Europe, really. Right. Virtually in Germany. It is virtually in Germany. It's virtually in Germany. <laughs> like the European Super League. Which is like the trending topic that yeah, I can't pe escape, uh, pe and yet I pe care people, nothing for. People, it. people seem a little fired up about it. Now I know how people who don't care about football think of the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's just this thing that everybody's talking about that I could care less about. Uh, anyway, are we ready to start the podcast? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, you do realize when one of us says something like that, Corey. Uh, Something other than a shrug is appropriate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because because that that is the that is flight operations manager asking if the pilot is ready to fly the I, ship. I've, and the fly the person flying the ship should probably not go. I, what I'm saying is I've been ready for a long time. For, okay. <laughs> Let's see here. About an hour now. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, oh, oh, look at look at oh, oh take, Mr. Professional. I, oh, take, take I'll tell us you in. what. I, I might as well get you uh, uh, some some uh, uh, anime references. We'll just call you Bryce from here on out. <laughs> All right. How do Let's we go. how do we do this now? What do we do? Uh, well, usually what Bryce says is okay. Well, then we're ready oh. to go in three, two, gotcha. and then he. Points he starts recording. He throws yeah. a compliment yeah. my way. <laughs> yes, like, right. Nice hair, right. Andrew, Andrew. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your hair is looking. He's like Justin. Uh, have you been eating okay, Brian? Have you been getting enough sleep? But then he just says, you know. Right. Yeah. And in three, two, one, Andrew, it's all up to you, buddy. Your hair looks great. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. My name is Andrew Maine. For our listeners out there who may not be familiar with me. I'm joined by Brian Brushwood and Justin uh, Robert I, I, Young. I, and, and I'm glad you brought me up first because uh, long time follower, first time person appearing on this. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is totally normal. It's great. Yeah, uh, I'm very excited to have you on. Obviously, we've all heard a lot about you, and uh, uh, it's good. We're, we're going to welcome you in like you were family. Okay, good. I, I, I and and then what's in. your name? Uh oh, my name is Justin. Oh, yeah, I was the one that was here, even though I moved across the country. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, great. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And as always, our producer, Corey Cranfield, otherwise known as Bryce. Mm. You know, you yeah. sound a little bassier than Bryce. <laughs> Bryce too. Right? So Bryce, Bryce so. too. Yeah, new Bryce. Bryce. Yeah, <laughs> new Bryce. New. <laughs> We've got a lot of new things on this show. Uh, if that this doesn't guy, work, Andrew we have Maine. Bryce clear. Yeah. I, 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 uh, uh, real quick, for those who don't know, Bryce is taking some well-deserved uh, vacation time. Um, 
However, he he is such he's so wonderfully priced that he's actually here, which means I can only imagine he is experiencing existential yes. agony <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> watching us try to function without, without him. him and <laughs> yeah uh, uh so uh everybody uh, uh at uh, brykus on twitter uh we'll let everybody know that you like bryce because he's taking a vacation and that's what vacations are for to be complimented yeah uh so, what's up Maine? B- big news what's big up? space Wait, news can- over the weekend Oh, Wait, sorry, so, sorry. Uh, 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 it's the first time I've ever heard. It's been over ten years. Do do people call you my main? They, they can. That's they code can. for they cannot. Uh, well, no, no, I, I don't know. No, I love like that. Every once in a while. I, I, I love it, man. Yeah, I, Andrew and I have known us, uh, known each other for yeah, a long no, time. I love each other it. by our last name sometimes. It's a, fun, main. it's a fun change. But not my main uh, man. No, I my my main main. My main main? Yeah. That's never happened. Well, I mean, That's of all the people. Happened. Okay, all right. <laughs> so as I say, <laughs> um, uh, it's been a great, amazing week for space news. Let's start off with the news from just a few hours ago. There's helicopters on Mars that work. Yep. Dude, those photos are awesome. And it's like... On the one hand, it's like, uh, yeah, they look like all the other photos from the, but again, in only one in the uh, fine, but it's like, this thing's going to be able to swing around, do a bunch of drone shots, get 360 footage. Uh, 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 we're going to be able to map it into a VR surface and all that stuff. We, we have drones flying around on Mars. What's so cool about this is that Mars is like, like one percent the atmosphere Earth has, right? And yeah. you're like, well, how do you how do you get a thing to fly on Mars? Well, there are two things. One, you spin your rotors a lot faster. Two, because Mars has one third Earth gravity, this can actually help. I've actually seen like modeling of showing how an airplane could even fly on Mars, which is crazy to think. But it's kind of like in that case, if it goes forward fast enough. And remember, we have high altitude planes that fly really, really thin atmosphere. A uh, helicopter is just a whole nother thing. And if you had asked me a couple of years ago, could you put a helicopter on Mars? I'd be like, oh, that sounds insane. I don't think that's possible at all. Glad to be wrong. Well, so so when did th- this hit with the last rover that landed, right? This 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 helicopter? Yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah, how this is this like the um, um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What's uh, Falcon's drone friend? Uh, R- Red Boring. Wing or something? Or... Poorly written. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Red Bird or Red <laughs> Bull. Or... The, the Red Bull. Yeah. Red Bull. Uh, 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 so, so how long ago was this, uh, uh, conceived? As far as how far back it goes, I don't know. I know that if you look back through some of the history of this, they had been talking with Air Environment, which the design would goes back to like 2014. Um, and Air Environment, by the way, is a really fascinating aerospace company that was started by Paul McCready. And if you look at some of the really big records that were set for like human powered flight, the Gossamer Condor, remember that thing, the guy, the, the cyclist pedaled that across the English channel. Yeah. No. That was them. So they've been building really amazing, you know, very, very lightweight aircraft for years and worked with NASA for a number of years on man planes, et cetera. So this is a project that was aero environment. NASA put together and pitched this. And I think part of, I think part of the idea here too, is that like, uh, when you want to pitch Congress, like, hey, we, we want a couple billion dollars to go to Mars. Like, well, we've been to Mars. And you got to go, yeah, but did we go there with a helicopter? <laughs> well, that, and- yeah, yeah. You, you, you have to have that big pitch. You got to have the sizzle. So, um, okay. Uh, I, I am certain. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it's not like they had the idea, let's send a helicopter to Mars first, and then said, well, what do we do with it? I mean, I am assuming that they already had plans for what to do with it. And I'm assuming that Andrew Maine would know a little bit more about what those plans are than we would. Well, well, Brian, what you just said before, the idea of what you can do with this helicopter for mapping, terrain, all of this, uh, that's that's going to be a fascinating because with a helicopter that can go fly 30 feet, 40 feet up into the air and go much further, go further around the vehicle and then come back, you can get an idea of what's on the other side of a rock. And we get some imagery that's for that, but the resolution fades at a certain point. So you can get a pretty good idea of what's going around. And this is a test bed because now that we know this works, now that we know that, hey, the math worked, everybody, 
we might see future missions where we might bring, you know, a bunch of little, think of like uh, the, the original, like the smaller Mars rovers with little helicopter payloads that could go much further, have solar panels and just go in multiple directions and just explore so much more of Mars. I, I would imagine. And you can go over to... I, I, I was going to say, uh, and, and this is purely me make, making this up, but I would imagine that there's value of self-examination where it's like, let's say, mm -hmm. let's say suddenly it's like, well, the rover's not moving. We're not sure what's going on. The ability to have a deployable device to, you know, fly around and take a look and be all like, oh yeah, no, you get you're, you got a giant rock back. Then you go mm -hmm. around it and then now you're good. That kind of thing. Yeah. Think, think about that. Plus the idea that, there's places we don't take the rover because the terrain's too uneven. You know, even even a gradual incline that's a little too high, we won't send the rover. But the helicopter's like, I don't care, and it can fly over and into craters and go look at other stuff. And not necessarily this one, but future versions. But even this, we'll be able to take it over areas where we might want a closer look, but we don't want to risk putting the rover there. How long is this thing going to stay in the air? Because like, uh, you can't just you know land it somewhere and plug it back in, right? Well, no, no, no. I think it's well, I like think a, it... it's like sound waves. Um, uh, he he transforms from a cassette recorder. He opens up his chest. Uh, a a bird cassette flies out. Yeah, and then it comes back in, and then and then he yeah. But even goes then, back to being there, there's, a there's there's a limited life span on the ro on 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 the rovers themselves. So uh, well, I mean, they go out, they come back, and, and then and then and then everything else is charged with solar cells right oh is that it is it is this going to be here infinitely yeah yeah yeah. well yeah looking at the the flight times are expected to get uh you know and they're looking at these things are only going to fly for like you know up to like 90 seconds or something this was a 39 second flight this is yeah, a proof of concept yeah but, i mean they'll be able to get some data back from it, whatever and to be, it'd be doing useful things yeah as far as actually i don't know is it fully able to recharge back on there you know is it like a robot I just, just presume going back that all this stuff in? we're just leaving trash and then eventually we'll pick it up when we get there but like, like for right now we're just throwing rocks over our neighbor's yard here's here is the moment that i hope i live to see is much like in the book the martian and the movie of the same name the martian um one nasa artifact can go visit another one like that to me will be real, uh, not intergalactic, interstellar, uh, extrasolar, whatever. It'll be awesome. Uh, it, it, it'll be real magic. The idea that we're finding I, our own trash. Well, yeah. Where it's just like, uh, look yeah. at that. Remember that Pepsi can we threw over? Yeah. Now we're looking at it with okay, the but, Mr. Okay, but but Pin all of this Pin. is useful stuff, right? Like 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 no, it's that that, cool. that moment. It's look, cool. there's going to be some moment. It. I mean, first of all, this rover is and and Andrew, correct me here, uh, uh, roughly the size of an SUV, right? So it's so it's like pretty like, big, yeah. Uh, so so maybe maybe at some point it needs a you know uranium something something, and then much like the Martian, it's like uh, well, let's go, let's just drive over there and go pick some up. Look, it's all fun in games until JDS3K's uh, crying Martian commercial. Their their, their PSA happens. No, all the and, trash. Yeah, that that is. I I think we've talked a bit about this. There's uh, one of the themes in um, Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Green or yeah Red Green and Blue Mars uh, series. He uh, there's like a fight where geologists don't want to mess with the structure of Mars. Uh, terraformists want to mess with it so it's like a reverse environmentalism message yeah. where it's just like uh hey man would you just leave, leave all the rocks alone so we could study them and then meanwhile it's like no lichen everywhere change the atmosphere let's do this um that'll be a great debate i'm really <laughs> looking forward to it so uh, what's kind of on the on the collectible front what's neat is that on board the helicopter is a small piece of fabric taken from the original wright brothers airplane Oh, really? No. That's so sweet. Why is Brian making a sad face? I don't know. Yeah. Hardcore Wright Brothers purist Brian Brushwood is appalled by this. No, it's 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 so sweet. You think it's hack? No, it's just very <laughs> sweet. You're saying it in the way that people describe certain other elements of our society. It's sweet like watching my eight-year-old rap. <laughs> that's what it's sweet like like i don't know that we needed that i don't know that that got us anything 
It's Look, very we sweet, spend though. so much time <laughs> as a society and even on this show, which tends to be more realistic about space travel, about the idea of inspiration. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's what this is for. Yes. This is is there I, for like first in flight on Earth, first in flight on Mars. Look at them, right, brothers? Think about and I mean it's a very American kind of tribute in the sense that you had two bicycle mechanics, guys who were not even in the conventional, weren't engineers, weren't mechanical engineers, were outside of the aeronautic circles of their period who did such an amazing achievement with first to flight and by logical things. And to think that 118 years later, we're celebrating what they did by taking a piece of what they did and saying, we remember where this started. That's and, awesome. Yes. And, and it probably took nothing away from the mission in general. It was sweet in the way that spoiler for anyone who is following history Neil Armstrong took the baby bracelet of his daughter and allegedly left it on the moon. Well, I mean, yeah, although that that's a personal moment for yeah. Neil Armstrong where this is a very clear larger tribute to like the the fact that this is the first flight, the first human flight on Mars is what just happened today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um I don't know. Seems to me like get come on, just go and trash this. You no, want to no, trash no, no, it? No, 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 no. Just it's just, it's it's it's. Don't it's, be coy. No, no, no. It's just difficult because like um, you wanted a more rad tribute. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's 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 totally fine. But it's like um, that moon moment when a human being was there to do a thing that was special. There was an actual human there to do the thing or whatever. But but this might as well have been just you Oh, know, so like, you wanted th a there human was to do it. So you would want th there the was first no person human there on for, Mars the, for that to be in the seat that the Wright brothers were exactly, in. Or something exactly. Like, like, yeah, like, like wearing that. a bomber jacket. And and, and, and this is me Wright purely Wright purely said. trying to figure out like uh like artistically um uh does art exist so you almost are, you literally are, you in a are vacuum. upset that we wasted. The I'm not right upset. Brothers I'm thing. not upset. You I'm are not upset. furious. No, you are I, spinning right, mad. All right. All right. Brian is I'm <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah. I'll take none of your so, bait, so sir. Two things. One, I'm sure there was a moment at like a JPL wherever where they did it, where they like they gathered around and they took the little like we got the piece from the Smithsonian. You know, uh, I saw Captain America's shield there too. We're not talking about that. <laughs> and they brought the little piece in there, and, and there was a little like, oh, cool. And like that's that's just I guarantee you for the people that worked on it, it was a very special moment. Now, by the way, we don't know that the Neil Armstrong bracelet thing ever happened. Correct. And 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 that's why I, I'm 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 only comparing uh, uh, narrative devices. I'm, I'm well, remember, just comparing as a talking stories. point, as a talking point, as a PR point, though, part of what NASA has to do is say, hey, this is what we did. And here's this connection to this other event. This right. is significant. And so from purely as a PR mechanism, I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on this, mostly because it does make that connection. Like, so if you just say, like, hey, do you think the Wright brothers are important? You'd be like, yeah, I do. And then it's like, well, then congratulations. This is important. We are tying this to that because it is, that's the first flight on this planet. That was the first flight on this planet. That matters, still counts. Yes, so. 100%. Um, Andrew, there, you are very good at speculating wildly <laughs> oh, about uh, uh, about things that become possible. Um, things that it occurs to me have just become possible with this very first flight are uh, uh, like we just talked about. You'll be able to, to get multiple perspectives and, and build a highly detailed 3d map of the area around the, the Rover, which means, and again, this is like, uh, I, I, I'm instantly looking to make a buck on this. Uh, that, that means that you can create a map so detailed that um, on your Oculus quest, you can personally fly this thing around the surrounding area and get as good a view as if you were actually on this thing. For for all the things that it takes pictures of. Exactly. Yeah. Like 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 uh, you can follow the rover. You can see the rover from all sides as though like like good enough like you might as well actually be there. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 my best idea of what to do with this. Um, 
but I am certain that Andrew will have better ideas. <laughs> okay. Well, it, that's not, I mean, that's that idea there though, Brian is a big idea. The idea that let's, we're there to see Mars. And now we've got, we look at how much we use drones on earth to see earth and how, you know, a, a few hundred dollar device changes the way we look at our own neighborhoods and everything around us. Hey, there's a Frisbee on my roof. You know, yeah. what are my neighbors doing in their backyard without their clothes? This has the same potential. And so this is amazing for that. But also think about when we can put more of them out there, we can put more of them out there. The most interesting parts of Mars, I think, are the things that are underneath Mars, lava tubes and caverns. And we have places where we can see through the surface of Mars, these openings that go into the underground area. There could be lava tubes that stretch hundreds of miles long and trying to figure out how to get robots inside of there is going to be tricky. But when you can drop a helicopter that can go in there and you go scan it, that's going to be pretty cool. And we're going to see when we start putting people on Mars, using these as, you know, advanced scouts to sort of explore ahead, communication systems, et cetera. You put one of these things up in the air, it can relay, you know, comms and stuff. So a lot of think about what we're using it on Earth for and apply it to Mars. I have a really, really dumb question, and I will not blame either of you if, if, if you say mean things. Um, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about NFTs, um, and we know that these are expensive operations to do. Would it be the craziest thing to auction off like visits or, or virtual spaces, or it's like missions to blank. And, and, you know, you, you auction it up and it's like, that's going to be mine, um, forever. This, 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 you know, three foot by three foot area will be the mission that Brian spent, you know, half a lifetime savings in order to cause to happen on another world and generations from now, I'll be able to point and say that's my spot. Like, like is that is that? Oh, dumb? you're like crowd or is it, or is it or poetic? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For for, for to, to to like get one more block on the map that goes from gray to right. living color. Right. Uh, I mean, it depends on who's running the expedition, right, Andrew? Yeah, I think I think any anything in the in a world of you know we'll see we'll see what we're talking about NFTs uh you know six months from now, but. In, in a world of cryptocurrencies, in a world of humongous amounts of money, trying to find places to go, and the idea that there's no speculation that you can't put a price on, why not? In my uh, my book, How to Make Money on Mars, by the way, plug, plug, <laughs> uh, one of the things I talked about there was the idea of a way of basing a currency on the cost of returning material from Mars so that you could kind of buy sort of Martian futures. And the idea that if you were SpaceX or somebody who wanted to fund this is to say, okay, for X amount of, you know, dollars is we'll guarantee you, you know, X number of grams of return payload from Mars because the idea would be that early on, there's going to be tremendous speculation and interest in this. That would fade, but, you know, there's billions of dollars of commerce to be made from the novelty phase, what? which will end, yeah. but... One one quick tweak. Uh, some folks in the chat are saying like, what, what, like the International Star Registry or whatever. No, the difference is nobody's going to any of those places. Like if you pay money and you get a physical object to go there, there's going to be some amount of truly new data that has never mm -hmm. been presented and to you, you, you would be a patron you, you, a patron of that data right you would be yeah. the yeah. owner of that new data right and and, and 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 theoretically the owner of that spot in in a way that is totally different yeah they they kind of have this already a little bit they're working on it with uh, some of the uh, crypto stuff around uh, audius and also theta and some of the others where basically uh, you can invest in a company or in a creator and then that creator gets to decide what you own, right? So you can buy in using your tokens to buy in whatever that is, right? So whether it's uh, more songs from that artist or behind the scenes, kind of like a Patreon kind of thing. But and uh, also you can. But 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 this is all on Earth with uh, with artistic. Uh, 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 yeah, no, but, yes. but he but he's saying that. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would it would all be part of the same. Like like all, all, all you need is passage to Mars, and now this. Like, you know, let, yeah. let's say this thing takes off on Earth. Like, yeah, like, like, or, or, or like, like, think about it. Imagine, imagine this thing does a lap and it says, uh, we have identified 
37 different rocks that um, uh, 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 that are big enough to hold in your fist. They are independent enough that they're not going to, you know, fly away based on a breeze or whatever. Um, uh, uh, we're going to literally auction them off. They are physical per, uh, possessions that, who knows, uh, God willing, someday you'll be able to pick up and say, this is mine. Uh Dude, I, I would pay some pretty good well, that, NFT that, money for that. That 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 gets tricky there because once you actually say because you have no ability to say that you have the physical property that you own because it's like without somebody being there to go to collect on it, it's it's the same as me and my telescope at the moon and selling craters. But the data or just the naming rights, you know, the idea if it's if it's through NASA or if it's through, it's like you know the NBA will sell you an NFT of a video game of a excuse me of a game clip, right? Uh, you don't actually own it, but you're the one. I own this part, right? Um, and we recognize that because we know what the NBA is. Like, oh, cool, the NBA. So I could see that, like, if NASA or SpaceX, you know, somebody was doing the the, fir the first group to get the data is to say that, like, well, you're the sponsor of this data. Yeah. This is it. I don't I, – I see kind of more of just if somebody said to Brian, like, hey, Brian, would you pay 500 bucks to sponsor, like, we're going to do, like, three football fields of exploration or whatever, you know, would you – would you want to sponsor that? And then forever in our map of Mars, you, you click on a link and it's going to say made possible by the Brian think, Brushwood Foundation. Yeah, I think that, right. that, or, or, that's, that's yeah. the thing. The, 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 the thing is that you get to be in the, in the history of Martian society. Right. It, or, 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 or the history books say this is Brian's survey. Uh, yes. uh, uh, basically like, yeah. uh, I don't know, Lewis and Clark, right? Like, like, like whatever yeah. their journey is. You get to be like, dude, I wrote the check. You're going to call it after me forever. Thank you, mm, yeah. the world. I think, I think that's, that's, that, 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 that's more likely. But speaking, speaking of supporting. Of, <laughs> I was literally just going to say, speaking of speculative financial decisions, <laughs> uh, uh, patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go to support this show. Head on over there right now. Keep us loud, live, and independent each and every Monday. And... Make sure that you get access to our After Things podcast. That is where we talk about business and the uh, uh, realities of being an online cr or independent creator each and every week. We thank everybody who continues to support us. Patreon.com slash weird things. So we had a really kind of a surprise announcement that came out on Friday, which was a bit unexpected, but it looked like perhaps things were about to sort of leak. And so what this was is NASA had selected SpaceX to provide the lunar lander component for the Artemis mission. The Artemis mission is basically NASA's plan to return to the moon and hopefully keep going to the moon. And it would involve first sending a using the SLS rocket with an Orion capsule on top, sending that, sending the Orion capsule to the moon, where it would then, or the Orion spaceship, where it would then rendezvous with some vehicle. And then from that vehicle, astronauts would descend to the Martian, to the, to the lunar surface, do their moon business, hop back on board, fly back up to Orion, and then come back to Earth. So the NASA said, okay, we built, we built the SLS. They just did a good, they did a green run of the engines. That's working. So SLS will probably fly. We've got the Orion capsule, which I got to go see the first launch of that when it was unmanned to see that thing work was pretty cool. We've got the Orion capsule, which is like a much bigger, roomier spaceship for astronauts to hang out in. And then they're like, well, now we need a thing to land on the moon. And that's when they went to open it up to private contractors. And the three groups were, that were pitching were SpaceX, uh, it was SpaceX. It was uh, Blue Origin, which was part of what was called the national team with a couple other companies. And then Dynetics, which has been this company that's been around forever doing all kinds of flight systems and space systems for uh, NASA. So NASA announced, hey, we picked, we, they wanted to pick to like, bat, like they wanted to pick two because ideally they have two different, like we do with crew, the crew program where we have Dragon and then we have Starliner from Boeing in theory, yeah. which is yet to carry anybody into space yet. Uh, and that was probably a very good choice by NASA to choose two. And some people argued, Boeing had argued, no, you should choose one and it should be us. Yeah. Had that happened, there would, you know, we wouldn't be putting astronauts in American spaceship right now. So in this case, NASA only had enough money to basically pay for one and basically over an installment plan. SpaceX was by far the lowest price. SpaceX said, hey, for 
$3 billion. We'll build a version of our Starship that will go to the moon and then take astronauts back and forth to Orion. The next closest bids, apparently, I read through the report, the next closest bids were like $12 billion. I think that was like the Blue Origin one, and the Dynex was like even more. And there are people going, well, they should have picked two. It's like, well... I think when, and they look at the ratings and they looked at SpaceX, they thought had the best chance of being able to do this too. Cause they just looked at like the number of missions NASA's done with SpaceX now for, you know, for cargo and crew have been a lot. And there is a part of NASA that is very happy with how that worked out. Very, very happy. And so. So uh, I, I, there was a profound like three minute gap where I heard a word and I didn't say anything and then I heard the same word again and heard it pronounced Dianex, uh, which is better than what I thought I heard, which was Dianetics. <laughs> which it sounds <laughs> almost exactly like it. <laughs> right? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Forgive well, me I, for my distraction on I'm that. On, I'm, I'm on, on this. They should have picked three, as in three SpaceX capsules because you could fit that <laughs> under what the uh, other bids were. Uh, uh, so, I mean, look, SpaceX for obviously, you know, I think whatever you will about Elon Musk, the person and his Twitter account. But like, if you like space exploration, cheap, reliable products for which space exploration can happen is a very good thing. That is literally the road to space. That those are the bricks that build it. Yeah, and I, I just said the spelling of it is D Y N E T I C S Dynetics. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> I'm just glad. I'm just glad. Like, like uh, Bryce in the chat is if, uh, apparently heard the same thing and was was had that same moment that I had. Um, dude, that's amazing. Now question we've talked before about um whether or not there's value in setting up shop on the moon as a way station to get to mars and other planets um are are, 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 in the past if i remember uh are are, i don't know we pick random things to fuss about um I, i i i don't seem to remember you being a big fan of 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 having a moon base before going to mars like like let's get get to Mars first. Oh. So there's not much of a point of, of, of having that midway. No, I'm, I'm, I'm all the above. I just, just the moon is a horrible place to launch Mars missions from you're getting out of one gravity. Well, then getting into another gravity well and having to put all of your launch support, everything else, your fuel and all that stuff in that other place. Uh, it just doesn't make sense from a, uh, I, uh, uh, if if I'm reading you correctly, like uh, absent there being a resource on the moon that makes it worth, anytime you go into or out of a gravity well is expensive. Um, mm-hmm. There if, better be a reason. Exactly, right? And if there's nothing there, then why not just stay in orbit and, and like you're building the Starship Enterprise, just, just, just keep on floating and bring whatever you need up and... You know, you want to go to Venus, great, send it there. You want to go to Mars, great, send it from from there. Yeah, the the problem is when you when you dig into the engineering of it, because you can say like, well, if there's a resource there, like, okay, what would that be? Like, you, you you don't have any methane. You might have you have hydrogen. You have water, so you could have hydrogen. Great. We don't have any experience with long term storage of hydrogen in space. Hydrogen's a thing that we use to get things off of Earth, but also is the idea that. You then have to have this entire infrastructure to mine it, produce it, refine it, which at some point we will. I think they will be. I think we in the future, I think we will be producing hydrogen on the moon and use for fuel on the moon. But it's it's one of these things that sounds cool. Then you get into the physics of it. You go, oh, it's like you're like, oh, we should use space solar. And you're like, OK, let's break down space solar. Right. Um, you got to have all these solar panels. And the thing people say, it's like, okay, you're going to still have day and night. Like, no, we'll put it out far enough that you don't, that it's always in front of the sun. Well, that's, you know, you know, that's a uh, geosynchronous orbit. So that's 22,000 miles out that you now got to transmit all this power back to earth. And you've got to have a big receiver that's about the size of what your solar panels would be on earth. It just gets more complex when you dig into the physics of it. And so the moon, and I'm all for, but the moon is like, we do a ton of research there. We could grow things, you know, biotech, all sorts of stuff. I love the idea of the moon. Exactly. Which, uh, so, so would I be correct in, in feeling like the most generous case for, uh, you know, 
trying out the moon is practice. Like outside of that, there's really not much there for us. Oh no, no, you don't. Have no, to I, I think what he was all. just saying. Yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff. Like there's there's think- growing stuff. There's there's there you know uh, explorations, experiments, practice, like, materials. Practice. Well, we, I mean, yeah, well, that, no, but there are, there are materials on the moon that we we you know what happens when. When the moon and the earth were formed by whatever collision that created this, there was different, you know, the different things happened on the moon than on earth. There's moon has, there are probably, there are giant caverns on the moon that could be the size of Philadelphia. Like, think about that. Think about a cavern the size of a city could be there. There are probably a lot of interesting things there to find. You might find materials that don't exist anywhere else. What happens when you grow bamboo on the moon? You know, what happens to, you know, know, Brian? Mike, do you I mean, know? Do you, I, wait, look, do you know? I'm the one. I'm the one who's pro moon, and, and I, yeah. I, if I remember correctly, so, I it was an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember it. I, we're, we're here on Team Moon, and you're and you're uh, saying that it's only good for practice. It's going to be our practice we, girlfriend. No, I'm ready yeah, to wind yeah. this be up. We get all kinds of crazy things that happen in microgravity or weightlessness where. Things that, like, even down to a, a level of how things like DNA are affected, because there's something about when you don't have the ablative force of gravity that affects, you know, the strands inside of cells, et cetera, then all the way to a macro level. On the moon, the biotech implications alone of being able to grow things in, you know, a tenth, G, you know, sixteenth of a G, whatever, is fascinating. And and you know what will happen there, plus the materials we might find. It could be very, very interesting. We might find that it's easier to make certain kinds of, you know, photo, you know, photo semiconductors and stuff. That's a possibility, you know, or it'd just be cool. Uh, I do remember like uh, reading some article about uh, uh, the case for Venus over Mars. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, uh, I, I know we definitely had a dust up over that. It seems like, it seems like, uh, Are you just revisiting all of our planet fights? Yeah. Dude, next <laughs> up is going to be a space elevator. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> doing the greatest hit. Andrew's back, and you're like, you're like, yeah, yes, your subroutine space fight. <laughs> yes, that's exactly where we're at. <laughs> the the Venus, Venus, from one point of view, is, is a little bit easier to sort of get to. And it has, you know, we like it because it's got like, you know, the if you get rid of the horrific hot heat, whatever, it's the, you know, closer to earth, you know, similarity, but Venus, uh, the problem is, is like, we're like, how do we go to Venus? And people are like, Oh, well, we build build landers that have these giant inflatable, like, wait a second. We've never done that before. (laughs) Like we've never done any, it's all all fan 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 fan. I I think the idea was, um, and this is me remembering, uh, 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 reimagined, but I, I, I believe it was basically like create Bespin, uh, Cloud City. Like if we could just, if we got really good at making blimps the size of small cities that could handle Earth-like gravities, um, apparently Venus is not terribly unpleasant, high enough, far enough out, as long as you have a giant dome over it. Uh, and there might be a case for it, uh, but, but I think that which, that's, which that's, again, that's, that's, as I say Andrew's, this, I understand Andrew's all of the complications. Is, yeah. It's like, yes. like <laughs> cool. That's a lot of crazy drawing. And yes, like, exactly. That's, that's a real it, fun. As we look outside our window at all those dirigibles flying through the sky <laughs> and our, However, and our aerial now, now, shopping now, malls. Now, hang on, hang on one second. Now, uh, uh, this the is aerial outlet stores. This is me yeah. a little bit trying to be serious here. Um, you could make a case that that Venus is more important to study in that it's a cautionary tale of what might be about to happen to Earth. Same size, uh, same runaway or, or theoretically a, a runaway greenhouse effect and all that stuff. So you could. Uh, uh, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, give, give me the reverse case. I love it. Um, what man-made climate change could nowhere cause what happened on Venus. A repeat of the great dying of like the the what happened with like the, uh, the Permian traps, which were these, the, the, uh, the big volcanic eruptions where we had a period of our planet where there was like hundred thousand years of volcanoes spewing stuff in the atmosphere that even that wasn't enough to put a tip us to the Venus sort of point. There's a lot of other factors that take it there. Like we could make climate change so bad that like, it's going to suck for us, but to get to Venus, you need 
you need astronomical factors well, and, and, stuff. and and maybe maybe that so work harder simps <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe that's why i'm intrigued by the idea of like if we could hang out and in, in venus uh then at least we could dispel the fears of us becoming venus like like that alone seems like a fine insurance policy well, that i would sure. pay i mean for. yeah uh, i think in in general we can we can try and figure out whatever like like, like we need to the, i think the biggest issue is us getting there like getting to the point where like right now the energy is toward mars and the moon right <laughs> to your point of practice once we start doing that right then like venus sure why not let's go let's build our dirigibles well well it, i don't know I'm, so you're saying abandon Mars right no, now? No, 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 no. I'm not. Abandon uh, Mars. Don't, don't, dash don't, 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 don't. We're trying to get um, you new traction on Twitter. No, you're Mars it, it's, abandoner, it's, Dad. Man, I t I'll tell you what. If I'm going to spend one space dollar, and the space dollar can either go to developing new real estate on other planets, or yeah, finding out how scared. We should be for our own planet. I can see somebody saying, I'd rather spend $1 to find out exactly how scared we should be for our own planet. And every dollar that goes to a Venus facility would definitely yield like practical information with things that we do not Could know. not agree more, which oh, is why okay. I'm right. asking that everybody donate to $1. find out what happened Patreon.com slash oh. weird things. We're going to mount a I was campaign. Gonna go, I was going to say <laughs> paypal.me slash pay Jerry. Yeah. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, again, you, you know that I have a propensity and a temptation to try to, to uh, figure out uh, a way to zag. What a, what an amazing thing that you have to zag away from Martian development. Like like that that is now too boring and now you're like I need to pivot to Venus. There there I believe uh, like uh too many normies are out here believing we're going to go to Mars. Uh we talked about uh was it was was it phosphines or whatever uh uh, uh previously on on Venus and uh, I guess recently somebody went back over the old data from the, the, the Russian probes. Yeah. Um, and they, they found something that seemed to confirm some of it. I, I don't know. Uh, I yeah. don't know if Castro personally killed JFK. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> That's what I'm trying so to say. I want, you to, <laughs> I want you to go for fun. Everybody go to Wikipedia and look up the history of the Russian space probes, which is the Venera program, V-E-N-E-R-A. And it is like this list of things sent to their death. Oh, my God. There's Let like me me all of seven missions or, or, or sorry, seven images of, from like 75 missions or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, Venera, Venera 9, lander operated for at least 53 minutes and took pictures. The other lens cop did not release. Venera 10, the lander operated for 65 minutes. That Venera is 11, so dope, 95 though. That's minutes. That's so metal. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, Venus does not want us. No, that's a, that's a real harsh mistress. Yeah, so uh, I'm all, I, there's, there's the... Uh, the idea of what do you do first? For what will give you the most bang for your buck? You know, what will give you like the, the advantage of the moon right now is because the moon's closer. You don't have to invest much money and time in trying to keep your astronauts alive by the time they get to the moon. Um, it's sort of a shorter time to and from the moon. The ability to reuse hardware like the Mar the, the lunar gateway idea. Um, Maybe. Um, neutral but uh no, no, no. I, I, but I i i'm a little bit more pro that than you are um I, be, uh, just because like i think uh um given given the choice between just floating in space and having some kind of even one sixth gravity I, I i'm tempted to believe that that that's a more sustainable colony space uh that 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 would be a good kind of really good trampoline to go wherever you want after that. Yeah. Just go look up, go look at Google images for starship and then lunar gateway and then see the images of like, there's, there's uh one in particular where you're looking at 
as, like what it would look like if the starship was to dock with the lunar gateway and it's basically like you know starship with a little nose ring <laughs> with a link here um uh, i put a link in our skype skype chat so uh that's the sort of thing because when you look at the actual size of this versus like what spacex is doing that's one of the things uh for great coverage on space by the way scott man scott manley his his channel on youtube is wonderful scott's got a background in astronomy he dives deep into the stuff super smart guy i just i learn something all the time when i watch him and uh he showed the comparisons of the lunar lander from spacex versus like the blue origin one and the dynetics yeah. one and it's like <laughs> it's just one looks like it's from the future the other ones look like they're alternates from like 1969 oh geez that's amazing so have you seen this image yet of like yeah it's so oh wow uh sorry which one is which here that's that's going to be the spacex lunar lander then somebody put the actual starship the idea that you were using starship to go there yep and then uh the thing in the middle would be the lunar gateway with all the modules uh, that's crazy okay so so and, and also, one one last one. Uh, we we've talked about like uh, belters, you know, like like carving out asteroids and being on the inside. Like, I mean, uh -huh. I don't know where, where where do you guys want to set up our our if there is to be an extraplanetary body that humanity will persistently hang out in for um, I don't know. Let's say essentially forever forward. Would you rather it be inside of a of a of a, a asteroid or hovering like Man, Bespin what, over? Uh, if, Venus it's, if, or? It's, if it's anything like the Expanse, it seems like the Belters party harder, and they all talk like Chet Hanks. It's awesome. I mean, you're not wrong. I I think that uh, we don't know what the long term health effects are going to be. Like you're living on, let's say, Mars at one third gravity. That this is a big unknown and. Um, that's something we have to figure out the advantage of taking, building things in space, like the free space, which is, I've got a book by Gerard O'Neill, which is all about called, you know, called the high frontier over here, which is worth checking out. That was a big inspiration for Jeff Bezos. If you watch Jeff Bezos's announcement, when they showed their proposal for the lunar lander, he began with slides and images of Gerard O'Neill's humongous cylinders, these O'Neill cylinders, which would rotate with earth gravity. I want that. I really, really want that. I would love for us to be able to build these big 1G facility places in space we could live on, but also Mars. I like the idea, and the thing that's hard for people to wrap their head around what Elon Musk is doing, a lot of the older space people is, his idea is like, I'm not trying to build the Saturn 6. I'm not trying to build the next best thing. I'm trying to build the railroad. I'm trying to build the interstate highway system, not just the car, the whole thing, because with that, you don't have to choose. You're like, I'm going to go live in on Mars for three years. Then I'm going to go into the asteroid belt and live in one of these cylinders for a couple of years. Then I'm going to come back to Earth because it's not a one-way ticket. It's not, we don't want to have another Mayflower. We don't want to have another, you know, it's one way and then you're done. Let's have jet planes in space. Well, that yeah. would be dumb, but you get my point. Yeah. Right, right. So the functionality of jet planes. So Justin did not give an answer. You did not give an answer. Corey, do you have an answer of where you want to go first? We have a, we, we have an international railway. Where do you want to go first? Wait, I'm clicking buttons. Okay. Um, yeah, we got to go straight to Mars, man. Forget the moon. Yeah. I'm done with the moon, man. Uh, also, I did answer. To... I said an asteroid. I said a carbon asteroid. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I just right. realized I, I left out the option of like just building out, a, 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 you know, a space station. I thought you were going to yeah. say like, oh, I, I forgot that one of the options is like Galveston. Like you can just go <laughs> yeah, there. North, just, North Texas. Just, yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> Not to go there, but to take the city and just throw and it just away. Throw it, into, <laughs> yeah, throw it into space. Like, oh, you thought that hurricane was bad. So long, jerks. Yeah. <laughs> I I love the idea that it be Mars. My fear of Mars, though, is Mars is going to be, and I want us to go to Mars. I fully swear it's going to be hard. It's going to yeah. be really, really hard. And I'm not telling anything to anybody at SpaceX. They, nobody up there, everybody knows this. And that's saying, like, it will be really hard. And 
how much stomach people have for the idea of difficult missions and endurance, watching people, you know, huddled inside of, you know, shelters for months on end going nutty, which early on. That's what's going to happen. Be. Yeah. And, and, but, and to, to be clear, um, these colonists went to Mars and you won't believe what happened. There's a difference between hard and eventual. Like, um, for example, you know, go back in time and it's like um, uh, 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 the folks who eventually discovered the new world and colonized it and so on. Um, uh, colonized it, meaning killed everybody who was already there. Uh, the, uh, uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't immediately say, I bet there's, a, you know, a new world. Let's go there first. You know, it's like uh, they, they, there's some amount of sailing that you do first. And um, I suppose I'm entertaining the idea that maybe there's more to learn by going to uncolonizable, harder places uh, than easier places is if, if, that, that, that's all I'm trying on. Yeah, you look at, you know, we we tend to think it's kind of like you show up there and poof, there's a colony, but it was, you know, 120 <laughs> years that, from that 90s hit. <laughs> Boom, yeah, 120 there's years. a colony. <laughs> Boom, there's a colony. <laughs> yeah, but it's 120 years from Columbus to Jamestown. Yeah, yeah. You know, we compress these things in our head, and then it's, it's you know, almost, almost, it's almost 300 years from Columbus to the United States actually being a thing. In our heads, it's like, hey, Columbus, Jamestown. Yeah, yada, uh, yada, yada. And, <laughs> yeah. and then there's yeah. the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amazing how much we compress that period of history down when like it was just this, you know, much much you know longer and you know even the conquistadors, you know, middle. I mean, early to middle, but yeah. Um, so uh, a lot can happen. And I agree. I'm trying to look at the fall of some of these things, but anyhow, it's it's a. I like the idea of Mars because just all. OMG Mars, we're now going to Mars. Moon yeah. is gonna Moon will be cool. Moon's gonna be cool, but Moon will be like, oh, but and then there'll be cool discoveries. I think I think we all know that Moon, you know, whatever. That's gonna be garbage real estate that we eventually pawn off on our second cousin. It's I, like I, 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 I think we all know that Mars is the primo real estate that can actually be developed. I don't sign on to this. <laughs> I I, I I'm a big, I'm big into the science and chemistry that comes from, you know, lower gravity environments and also just what the hell we'll find on. I think you, Brian, you're going to see at some point, they're going to take this gigantic superdome sized underground cavern in Mars or the moon rather on the moon, pump it full of air. And you're going to watch people flying around using plastic wings. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, damn, I want to go there. Yeah. Like, sorry, Brian. We listened to your podcast. You're not you allowed. Crapped all over. Okay, first we, of all, we, the the ministers of the moon, deny your passport to winged paradise stamp. Personally, I think it's adorable. What is that? Uh, applications from Justin and Andrew immediately <laughs> approved. It Here are your been... wings, your moon wings. <sighs> wow! I wish Brian oh, was here. Oh God. man. It has hey, it's been... Corey, it's Bryce. Oh, wow, my God. I'm glad everyone's you guys are... here. Wow. Let's fly in formation. Oh, it'd be well, great if we had a fifth person here. Smash oh, no. cut to Brian in Space Galveston. Just ten, bummed. Eating Noodle Robin. Just eating Noodle Robin. It has been 10 years <laughs> I have asked you guys to read the Kim Stanley Robinson Red Mars, <laughs> Green Mars, Blue Mars trilogy in which he describes this. And for you guys to turn around and act like I'm the one against Maybe it. Maybe we'll you, get to it in another 10. You, oh. <laughs> hey, who's got picks? <laughs> yeah, we would, we would read My it, pick Brian, is Kim but... Stanley Robinson's Red Mars, yeah. Green Mars, Blue Mars yeah. series. Red Mars, We'd Blue read it, Mar but the trip to the Green moon Mar is so quick. Quick, yeah. just can never get past the first couple chapters. <laughs> Fair enough. You wouldn't, you definitely, ooh, that's a crazy idea. You literally could get to the moon so fast that you would not have time to finish reading this, uh, this terraformation series from, from Kim Stanley Robinson. Uh, what's your pick, Andrew? 
My pick is the PBS Space Time series on YouTube. Um, this is, I like physics. I like really cool stuff. Some of that stuff's over my head. And I go, I don't understand. But thankfully, Dr. Matt O'Dowd, who is the host of PBS Space Time, is, let me tell you something about science explainers. I'm going to give you my little thing. There are people that you'll go, oh, I watched this documentary of Dr. So-and-so and explain this physics thing. And it was really cool. I'm like, what did they teach you? Um, well, the animation was cool in this thing. And it's like it falls apart. And that's the problem. A lot of science explainers on TV, they're really sound convincing. They're really good. And then you walk away a week later and you know nothing, nothing. It's science porn. And this has been a thing of frustration for me since I got involved in like science education for TV and stuff. So when I see somebody, I go, oh, man, this this person's really explaining it. And in a step-by-step -step way, and if you you watch like Matt O'Dowd, he'll get into like, you go look at the topics they cover, holographic universe, he'll do an episode, why string theory is right. Then he'll do another episode, why string theory is wrong. But then only these episodes that come before then that will give you the foundation of stuff. So it is a really good, if you like physics and you kind of like to read this sort of stuff, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. He's an astrophysicist. He seems to know what he's talking about. Um, really, really good. And then, you know, he's got videos like, you know, can you fart your way to the moon? You know, an eh. important question. So all kinds of topics, black holes. He'll get into like kind of the sci-fi stuff, like like how a black hole drive works, which is kind of cool. And just, ah, uh, you know, great stuff. String theory, physics, all of it. Cool. Brian, you got a pick? It's yeah, PBS Space Time. PBS yeah, Space Time. PBS Space Time. I do. I want to make sure I get his name right. Um, oh, Corey has gotten me into a wormhole of just watching Ryan George videos. Uh, he does these very short get in, get out sketch comedy bits. He plays both characters. Uh, all characters. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, sorry. Often, sorry. Often Sometimes there are three, <laughs> three whole characters. Uh, it's really great. Um, it, it, it wastes none of your time. Uh, 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 here we go. Uh, 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 just, uh, just if we could listen to 30 seconds of The Man Who Invented Duck, Duck, Goose. Here it is. Well, this is, uh, yeah, The Man Who Invented Tag. Oh, that's Tag. I think that's, yeah, that, 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 no, that's yeah. the first one. Uh, I, no, no, I, I, no. The it's, second one what, is Duck, Duck, Goose. Yeah, yeah here we go. All right. How do we get audio on this? Uh -oh. uh, you you uh -oh. you unmute. Uh, I don't know. Last time you there came you to me with the game, it made me feel pretty uncomfortable. Uh, you, you, oh, you mean you tag? Unmute. Yeah, no, this is completely different. Okay, okay game, good. Because in that game, you wanted everybody to run around tag? and touch yeah, no, each other. Yeah, no, no, totally okay. another concept game, here. Okay, well, great. So we get a bunch of people, right? We sit them in a circle, right? And then I touch all of them. Oh no. Yeah, they're all sitting down, and I'm standing up, and I'm going around. Hey, Corey, 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 Corey. Pause the YouTube. I think Bryce actually has the, uh, the the solution for you i can say i've watched uh, a, a few of these videos they are very very funny if you enjoy uh uh man i i want to say it reminds me of a sketch comedy version of like uh uh brian regan or um who's the uh uh oh man i can't remember the 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 big Ronald, Re white Ronald, guy. Ronald Reagan. No, not Ronald Reagan. <laughs> he was the uh, president. No, the other stand-up comic. Stephen uh, Regan. Not not, uh, not Stephen Regal. Stephen no. Regal. Uh, uh, Rowdy, it's clean, Roddy, it's very Regal. smart and clever, clean comedy. Yes. In 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 a way that uh, I, I think even in sketch comedy, which has a tendency at its best to kind of by default be kind of dirty or subversive. Yes. This is, 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 uh, uh, the opposite direction almost in a, uh, you know, kids in the hall was, was kind of bizarre and, and subversive, but, uh, at their, at their core could be very funny and clever and clean. And, and, and this is, uh, well, and, uh, in and, that and also our, our friends, auntie Donna, like their sketch comedy can go anywhere. Like you, you never. It, well, it, that is almost universally subversive and dirty. Cor uh, correct, but 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 also often with music and all this other stuff, where it's like this this his game is could take place in this room with just the three of us. Only he portrays all three of us and knows exactly. Like it, it is so efficient. I, I I like his stuff a lot. So yeah. so so Ryan George. Ryan George, big shout. 
Watch a documentary series. Finish the documentary series. Ooh, the Q, 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 no? Q Into the Storm Ooh. on HBO Max. Uh, I got to say, boy, do I not like that everything has to go three episodes too long these days. Okay, before you tell me what you thought of it, okay. here's what I know about you, is that yeah. you don't trust that Adam McKay team outside of anything with Will Ferrell. No, untrue. I love Succession. Succession's like one of my favorite Oh, I, I didn't know that was them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I, okay. You tell me what you thought, and, <laughs> and then I will, I will tell you what I thought. And then I you will retroactively you fit your opinion. No, 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 no. I, like, I already have my opinion. It, it, yeah. was, it was much better than I thought it was going to be. I wrestled with it. I am immediately upon watching it didn't like it. The longer that I got away from it, the more I appreciated what I really liked about it. And what I really liked about it is the fact that it gets a ton of time. If you're unfamiliar with the basic story of Q or QAnon, uh, there is a very convoluted, but because of the access it gets to the principles, entertaining and uh, engrossing story between three people, a kid who has a bone density uh, disorder who is in a wheelchair who started 8chan, the bizarre father and son team that he wound up selling that website to, and they are entrenched in this mystery of who this mystery poster Q is that started on 4chan and then wound up migrating to 8chan uh, and has become a political phenomenon. If the show, the 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 documentary, in back in the day, it would have just been a two and a half hour documentary movie. It wouldn't have been a six hour series on HBO Max. Would have just been about who's Q, and now let's spend all of our time with these three principles. It would have been. Like, these were the most engrossing people I spent time with in a documentary since King of Khan, where, like, you knew immediately these people were just such archetypes. They were all chasing after this kind of cosmically inconsequential thing, which has its own universe of bizarre people. Like, that, I loved it for that. The problem with it to me is that the documentary is also trying to prove that Q is indeed this massive force in society. And I just simply don't think that the evidence backs that up and the documentary is dragged down whenever we are spending time talking about how important Q is instead of just saying, hey, look, it's got followers. It obviously is well-known in political society. Let's leave you to interpret how important or not important Q is it spends a lot of a, an equal amount of time proving that as it does to me spending time on what is really an amazing f freak show story because ev the three people that are there they're all lying to the documentarian the documentarian knows that they're that they're lying to him you as the viewer know that they're lying so you're choosing and guessing who's telling the truth and who's not that's a lot of fun. If it were just that, it would be one of my favorite documentaries ever. Instead, it spends roughly three hours proving something that I think is not there. That's interesting. I I didn't perceive that uh, that there was a lot of proving of anything outside of the the general assertion that uh, a lot of Q people were there in that mob that hit up the Capitol. Um, uh, I, 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 I think it does a fine job of saying, I mean, to be honest, like, uh, they don't say it, but it's pretty clear where it's like, Hey, turns out that when you lay out a Rorschach test or a puzzle or just put out a bunch of weird ass, uh, Nostradamus quotes, people, people read into it, whatever they want. And then they go, uh, they use that as justification to do the things they wanted to do. For whatever reason, they eventually wanted a freaking, uh, 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 as if it's uh, 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 World War Z, 
over, you know, overrun the Capitol. I, I just, <laughs> I, I just kind of feel like imbuing QAnon with the power of of that event yeah. is literally like what believers of QAnon do to to reinforce the fact that this S poster on the internet has power. Like, like it is to me the exact same thing. Uh, of of like saying like oh no well well they definitely did this because it fits into a worldview you know it fits into the worldview of Q believers to say that yes there is this satanic pedophile cult and that's why the world is the way it is right right, right. it fits into the worldview of people who are befuddled and scared of where our modern politics are to say no the reason why the Capitol got stormed is not because of very simple things that we understand, but rather because of this bizarre conspiracy that is being spun on a website that I don't go visit. Right. Like, and, and in general, that's my belief on it. And people can agree or not agree with my belief on it. But like that to me, weighed down the idea. You don't need to, in, you don't need to weave that in to what is a great, story of of ron watkins fred i forget his last name and jim watkins right uh and in that regard i think we 100 percent agree where the strength of this is that it's those three people if if, if you just just divorce yourself from ain't no truth gonna be found here ain't no conspiracy gonna be found ain't no whatever but if you want to hear a really weird interplay between three people who who have an escalating feud between various aspects or whatever uh yes also i have a flow it, chart for documentarians should i turn the camera toward me no. no but i think it will tell a better story no i'm just a hard no on making the documentarian a central part Oh, of, got it. Of of the uh, documentary. it annoys me so much. That that new that I mean it's not new, but like there are some times where it's fine, but it's that I want to be a star. I want to put my face out there. I want to be the voice of this. And it's like, we already know you're not objective. And now Well, and also it's like so much. I I have problems with Morgan Spurlock and uh uh, uh <laughs> do, do you have less problems with them now? <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and that the and, world and, has and, changed. No, who's the other guy? The 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 uh Michael Moore. Michael, Michael Moore, Moore yeah. yeah. I have problems with those with some of the movies they make, but at least they have the dignity to be cartoon characters. So when they turn mm. the camera to them, they're like, like, I'm a big fat cartoon character. Like, I'm doing crazy stuff. Look at my crazy hair. I'm gonna eat 50 pounds of McDonald's right now. Like, I'm gonna go crash into a a you know the GM headquarters because I'm a cartoon character. It's, and it's just called an, Roger and me. Roger yeah. and me. <laughs> yeah, if you're just a normal guy and you're like, I'm a normal guy and I wanted to investigate this thing, it's like <sighs> That's just personal preference to me. Yeah, I I do. It is interesting the idea of a uh, there are these nuts that believe a small group of people are controlling world events. Let's go look at this small group of people controlling world events. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it's um, yeah. Uh, uh, all so, the stuff if you edited it down, like God, there could be an electric three hour documentary compared like considering where that story ends with the three of them. Like, there's an electric three-hour documentary that solely focuses on those central characters because they're all engrossing. You want to spend time with all of them. The story's worthwhile, and the ending, the footage they get of what would be the natural end of their story, if that was the end of the documentary, that would be Chef's Kiss. Instead, it goes another episode. Hmm. Any other picks here? Corey? Corey? Indeed, I do have a pick. And I've kind of mentioned it earlier. And this is Audius. Uh, Audius.co. Um, this is a, one of the cryptos. Uh, the neat thing about this is uh, this is decentralized audio. So this is basically Spotify. This will be replacing Spotify, Google Music, uh, iTunes. Um, it 
the idea of this is basically giving the control back to the creators. So instead of doing the normal split, what is it? The uh, I think uh, the uh, seventy thirty percent royalties well, it's even, or it's whatever even, it is. It's even worse on streaming. So it's yeah. only twelve percent that the um, uh, musicians actually typically typically get. And so this is much more. So they, they get to create their own tokens. People can donate to them. People buy into the music. Um, uh, and it's real quick. Yeah. We're, we're talking about a platform like iTunes or, right. yes. or YouTube so you can, or some other place. Yeah. Yes. So this so is you're actually, uploading your music. Do you have to upload it exclusively or is no. it decentralized? No, it's okay. totally decentralized. Yeah. And so this is live right now. So you could go play with this. Actually, I've been playing with it. Um, just to kind of see what's coming around the corner, because it's it's actually some some pretty pretty neat stuff, and they have the white papers out. So if you go to the website, they have the white papers d uh, discussing exactly how it works and how much the money the musicians get, all that kind of stuff. So the musicians, musicians, yeah. musicians. Um, it's actually it's actually really cool, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot more of this coming out where the creators are going to be taking control uh, of their audiences and 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 using less of Spotify, using less of Patreon, that kind of stuff. Because in this, you get to control everything that goes on with your audience So your content. Would I be right in reading into this that that just as um, uh, Bitcoin, whatever Bitcoin is, is essentially a bunch of computers constantly updating a giant global uh, record of what transactions go where, and mm -hmm. you are paid to do that, uh, this would be... Uh, a bunch of computers being yeah, I, receiving a chunk of money for updating, uh, uh, updating like like who's listening to what, yes. where, and and who owns what. Yes, and then you also get so like as a uh, one of, one of the fans, a fan of you, by streaming video, they actually get paid. Got it. And by sharing it, they Got actually it. get paid because they're so. Using so in it. other words, like a, like uh, whereas Napster. You paid for the computer, you paid for the bandwidth, you paid to steal the music, you you did not pay the artist, the artist got nothing. Like reverse Napster, basically. Mm. It's like uh, you're hosting it, you're sharing it, you're getting a slice of things by virtue the, of uh, helping the infrastructure. Yes, but it is, it's hosted on everything. It's peer to peer. So everybody is basically by using it, more users, better streaming, that kind of stuff. So I don't know, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Cool. RVJ3. Call me skeptical. All right. Skeptical. Uh, just, yeah, that's your rat name. I just talk. <laughs> call me fact, skeptical. Call. My name is... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I had a call last week uh, for something else with uh, John Fanning, Sean Fanning's uncle. Um, you may remember him from, yep. you know, a little thing called Napster. Nice guy. But anyhow, yeah. Uh, I, I'm i I'm hopeful, but like, you know, awesome. Remember when we hear like, oh, artists only get 12%. Like, well, the late, whoever owns the rights to it is a different thing too. Because here like, oh, we'll... That was like Apple said, oh, we pay our artists this versus so-and-so. And it's like, well, whoever has the right to sell it is who the money goes to. And what the artist gets paid is, you know, can vary. So it's sometimes it's, it can be a little bit misleading. Like they only pay the artist 12%. Like, well, here, if I'm a producer and I produce this for some artist, then I'm going to pay my artist X percent or something too. So oh, I there don't we know. Go. I'm, I'm, I, I want these things to work, but just... You know, we already have like people artists complaining about NFTs being sold of their art without their permission. Well, that's yeah. I mean, uh, 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 that's early days of the internet stuff there, though. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. To me, yeah. NFTs, uh, the, the NFT thing for everybody's like, like, oh, NFTs, like here today and gone tomorrow. It's like the 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 thing with NFTs was that there was a a, a proving ground for the idea that digital only collectibles are have a market. Now, how well, that market is refined, like where it goes from here, I think is is subject I, to interpretation. I would like to believe that overnight the internet all of a sudden believed in property rights for intellectual content. <laughs> I, I'd yeah. like to believe that happened. I want to believe. I want to live in that world where that just happened. Yeah, that well, certainly has not not happened. No. Yeah. But all cool. Well, gentlemen, it's been weird. <laughs> Awesome. Where's that Japanese music? Oh, it's, you're gonna make me do it, aren't you? Well, no, yeah. we don't normally do it now, right? It's only when we go oh, out of here's, when we go here's, off Twitch. There you go. There you go. Thank you. All I know is I don't get to go pee until I hear this. Oh, okay. Go. Yeah. Go pee. Go pee. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh no, normally it's just me and me and me and Riser and talk and Corey. Yeah. Yeah, you can, can stop the music. It's yeah. fine. Stop the music. They just play it for five seconds so Brian can go pee and yeah. me and Bryce talk. <laughs> what do y'all usually talk about? Uh, I don't know. Well, normally it's weird because like uh, uh, every other time that it's happened, I, I've been on Skype, right? So like me and you have actually like talked for a couple of times since I came into the, the headquarters today. So like now it's just kind of us having yet another conversation as opposed to what it was before where Bryce and I would like be having a conversation about like our weekend and stuff like that. We've already done that. So, so you're not totally sold on the NFTs yet? Are you where you? Well, at? it depends. It depends on what you mean by NFTs. Like, I, I, I am sold on the idea that people, like, want to own digital memorabilia. Mm -hmm. uh, I am sold on the idea that people there is at least an L, an, a critical mass of the community that has looked at blockchain as a way to be the like digital signature that shows you this is real. Mm -hmm. Um. Those to me are the biggest barriers that need to be passed for like this concept to be a thing that people really want to spend money on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do I think that everything that's being sold as an NFT now is a good idea or is going to be the future? Uh, no, 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 I don't. No, I'm I'm sold on the technology of NFTs. And to be honest, the artist and the uh all the, the NFTs that you've currently seen, like artwork and music and stuff like that, that's, to me, that's the um, the surface level, right? The What NFTs that a te technology can do in the background as far as tracking items and stuff like that. So um, like VeChain uses something somewhat similar to uh, NFTs where they track individual items. So when you buy a piece of fruit, it gets tracked, right, from wherever it goes so you know exactly everything that happened to that piece of fruit yeah you know or like a handbag right and so you can verify that you bought your louis vuitton bag yeah using blockchain and nfts right so i, I see nfts as being way more than just some art you know and that's that's what i'm bullish on well sure but that's a, like a b2b solution where like Art is where money is, and where money is is where where people want yeah. to pay attention. Yeah. And it's the sexy thing right now, right? Because like nobody. Well, because also about it, it, it's like art. So if you found a new way that you could protect the the uh, distribution chain. By the way, could you get the uh, blink thing off there so I can see Andrew's we face? Sold up. There we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, yeah. Okay. Um. I think if you were like, uh, uh, oh, here's a way that we can track things from the 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 factory to your uh, uh, a point of sale and how you can uh, now s resell it with confidence because you can show that only one person owned it and they only owned it for this amount of time, blah, 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 blah. Like that is fairly unremarkable in the larger world in, in the way that people selling... Yeah. Uh, a picture for five million dollars <laughs> is 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 novel, yes. right? Oh, like, because yeah, no sure. one's ever spent no that money on a that. JPEG before uh, that we know of, and now you can say, oh, "Okay, well, that's that definitely happened." So, I I, I certainly appreciate that. All right, be right back. Yeah. All right. Let me swap over. Ooh. Do we uh do we have an email or? I don't have an email. Oh. Uh, so, after things. People are saying they're hearing echo. Echo! Yeah, I do too. Echo! Mm -hmm. Where are we getting an echo from? I haven't changed anything. Oh, maybe it's this? Did that fix it? Echo! Well, I think that oh, fixed it. Bryce says it was from uh, an external source. I had my microphone was muted. I just turned it off right now. So you don't get to pin this one on me, Bryce, wherever you are. Ah, <laughs> got him. 
Well, I think it's fixed. Cool. How's yeah, it feeling? It's, it's something about the way I had the other, uh, the music. As soon as I closed the music tab, it went away. There, there was definitely yeah. something uh, slapping back when yeah. when you when you were playing the yeah, YouTube to, clip. I'll have to talk to Bryce here in a minute. Let's see, yeah. see what he says. So, uh, what are we what are we gonna cover in after things? Um, you know what? Uh, I, you know, we we kind of ended. I mean, I ended by kind of like met and you know NFTs and this digital stuff. But I would love a conversation with Corey about like you know what this stuff is going to be for music and stuff like this. I think that would be Corey if you're game for that. Like I think yeah. Corey, uh, you Corey know, has thoughts about crypto. I do have thoughts. I felt that. I, I felt. <laughs> You will notice that the moment <laughs> the the other 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 c word came up with Corey, <laughs> that I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I could tell you you've been following this pretty intensely, so I think that'd yeah. be great to have a. Because I think you know, you know, part of the part of the, the 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 nice thing about the seat you're in is sometimes it can be like, all right, group think guys, let me give you my take. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, Fanatical Jim, Bryce is not dead. He cannot haunt me from the grave. The fact that he likes to sleep in a grave, that's his own personal <laughs> business. Yeah, the fact that he's constantly talking about s subjects of deep, deep seriousness, like, he can choose to be very grave he in how he addresses things. Corey, are you crypto trading live on the show? No, no that was um, I, 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 the thing that happened just before you came in was Andrew said, Corey seems to know a lot about crypto and yeah. we should talk with Corey about crypto. And, and then you mocked. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. What I just didn't know why he was looking up crypto stuff. Okay. Yeah, all all I know is my Dogecoin joke investment turned out way better than I expected. The only oh, have, the only on crypto. Doge. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, yeah, I had a. Yeah. Father Robert was like heavy into Doge, right? Well, I mean, I mean he was at one in point. it for the lulls. I mean, he was early into Bitcoin too. He was in it for the love of. Hey, one more second here. Uh, oh God. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I have the after things thingy. Mm. Uh, well, you have the 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 theme there. Yeah. Yeah. That's that should be good enough. All right, Andrew, if you're ready, in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Corey, whose name I still can't pronounce. Cranville. Yes, Corey. Corey Cor Crypto Corey, Cranville. Corey Triple C. Castillo. Yeah. CCC. Well, in our uh, episode of Weird Things, we brought up uh, talking a little about cryptocurrency, some other stuff there, and I noticed that... Uh, Corey's ears perked up, and I think he's probably got a lot of knowledge on this. I think it would be fun to have a discussion about this with somebody who seems to be pretty engaged in it. Absolutely. And so let's begin. Um, Corey, what's your involvement in this? What's your experience? What are your thoughts? Uh, involvement and experience. Uh, experiences is many, many, many hours uh, staring at my money going out the window and then right back in the window. <laughs> um, no, I. I've done a fair amount of research. That's pretty much what I do when Brian's not using my time. And so I'm pretty passionate about um, not only the making money side of it, but also this is this is the web 3.0. This is the next. It feels like when I'm having a conversation with Brian uh, or anybody around here, it feels like I'm, I'm the guy in the uh, late 80s talking about this this thing called the Internet. 
And they're like, yeah, <laughs> but people steal things on there. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, yes, uh, <laughs> sure. But b- people do bad things on with crypto. Like, okay, yeah, sure. But y- you can lose a lot of money. Yes, of, of course you can, right? So th- that's kind of my involvement is is is, is trying trying to make some money uh, and also trying to see where where everything's going to be going. Like like the NFTs, like DeFi. The NFTs are. Okay. Uh, yeah, time go, out. Go, go uh, sorry, this is me being Zach from Saved by the yes. Bell. Freeze. What's an NFT? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> NFT, non fungible token. Yeah. Basically, it means like uh, most of the crypto coins, even though they have a different number tied to them, but they basically spend the same. All dollars look the same and spend the same. A non fungible token is more of it's a individually signed item, and that is the one and only version of that. So whether it's a piece of art or it's it's anything that could be uh, individually serialized, is basically so basically it. you know digitally what a thing is, right? And, yeah, and and, and that's, one Bitcoin is as good as another Bitcoin. Yeah, um, and even you know, or you could convert it to Bitcoin Light or Cash or whatever like this. But versus, you know, an NFT is yeah. It's yes, own, its own, thing. its own thing, and and that's where that's the non fungible part. Yes, uh, and and that's where the idea of like, okay, well, <clears throat> people get hung up with the NFT debate on like, oh, well, you're buying a JPEG or you're buying a GIF or you're buying a video. I can I can have that JPEG. It's on Google for free. I can look at it. Blah blah blah. Yep. And it's like, no, I could buy a Banksy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, mean, I I could buy a Mona Lisa. <laughs> Click. Yeah. It's on my phone yeah, now. I, look. I, I'll say from my point of view, like, I have been a big believer in blockchain for a long time, and even crypto. Like, I've been in a crypto before crypto, not in, but I mean, I, but I've been critical of of the embodiments of it. Like, like I'm still not a fan of Bitcoin because of just the way it's generated. It is, it is hugely inefficient, and I've read the, oh, no, it's really not. Like, no, and it's such hand wave. Like, it really is. It burns up CO2. I, you're turning energy. Can I, What's can, that? I, can I discuss some points on that? Just to sure. Add, just, Only just to add, if uh, you explain the points, because <laughs> I understand you're on level twelve. I understand you're on level twelve. Uh, I'm on level two, and I'm going to need you to walk, slow walk me through this. Which which part? How, where are we going back? Let's let's, let's let you let's tell me here. Because, All right, hold on. I'm I don't gonna be, even I'm understand gonna be the, the dispute between the two of you. I'm going to be the man on the street. Thank yeah. you. Uh, 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 to try to. Uh, Hey, everybody on the internet's telling me that uh, uh, all cryptocurrencies is awful for the environment because it's wait, producing. Wait, 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 Justin, let's, uh, let's sorry, let's it's me, it down. other, it's Look, me, we, other guy on the street. It. Hold on, I, uh, I wanna, I'm gonna interrupt, like guys, like all serious. I want because there is th- th- that's the problem because all of a sudden we, we've equated Bitcoin is not the same as Filecoin and there are other things. So I just want to let him address the Bitcoin energy consumption thing. That was. Literally the bit that we were trying okay. to, All right, to do. Let's go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay. Inter- oh, okay. Thank you, Brian. Um, hey, so Justin, as I understand it, one of the problems with Bitcoin let's, let's like Corey, is that okay. it takes a lot let's of energy like to let's generate like Corey, them. go ahead. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Bitcoin currently produces or uses about the same amount of en- energy as Las Vegas, the city of Las Vegas. So it's a fair amount, but it's also not earth-crushing amount of electricity. Uh, the second thing is... Uh, they're incentivized to make it as efficiently as possible because the only way you make money during using or, or mining Bitcoin is by uh, using the less electricity, the cost of electricity, and then it costs to produce the coin that you can sell, right? So that's why they're super efficient. So they're attempting to develop technologies to reduce that as much as possible, right? Okay, can I pause so you there? Yes. There's a reason why they're doing a ton of Bitcoin mining in China and places that use coal because it's super cheap and they don't have the environmental restrictions that we have. Yes. That's one of the problems it's been is that we're moving this to dirty places, dirty places where they don't restrict that. And it's Las Vegas. What was it five years ago? (laughs) You know, it was and that's for sure. Um, So. One one caveat I would like to add to that, or one point, is that currently about seventy five percent of Bitcoin is being mined on renewable energies. So as much as, as far as we know, but remember that that is that is a that is a 
uh, a speculation based upon because we don't know where a lot of it's actually being mined, where it's an assumption based upon where it is, where you look at the actual number of mining being done in places like China and stuff and elsewhere, it may be bigger because it's dark. We don't really know how much of where it's being mined. Then then we can also assume that it's 100 percent used renewable energy then. Right, so if we don't, well, that actually would be an know. unreasonable assumption given the number of mines and stuff, places with companies we know that are located in China doing correct, that. Though. Correct, but I'm just saying it's it's possible we don't we don't know that, right? So right, I'm saying we don't know. We we know it's not. We know I guarantee you it's not zero. Yes, and I guarantee you it's not a hundred. I am highly skeptical, personally speaking, that it's seventy five percent of it's done on on renewables. Yes, yes, because I don't know even how we really legitimately begin to measure that. Yeah, I mean that. There's obviously nothing I can argue with that about that because that's you. You are quite possibly correct, you know. So, the, but we we won't ex actually know that. And it is it is energy intensive, you know. But so is mining gold. Well, I guess you know to to that point, if you, you had you had two things there, Corey, where mm -hmm. it's like you're incentivized to do it the cheapest way possible. Yep. Right, which we hope leads toward better processing which leads to less energy consumption yes. and uh, but mm -hmm. we all know that the realities yes. of it are like okay if that's the possibility or if that if that does happen great but otherwise they're going to find the cheapest possible energy which happens to be the dirtiest possible yes. as also i should add that i am not a bitcoin maximalist i actually don't okay. prefer mm -hmm. bitcoin very much at all for exactly those reasons and others like it's Bitcoin is too centralized for me. As in, uh, just the other day, yesterday, we had a massive drop in the price of Bitcoin because China turned off the electricity. So we lost forty percent of the hash rate in Bitcoin. So forty percent of the processing, of yeah. the transactions. So the Bitcoin price dumped, right? And so that's too centralized going forward. Mm -hmm. Also, Bitcoin uh, is go ahead. But, and I'll make a counter argument because the argument said, I like, guess, Andrew, it is energy intensive, all this, but the benefit we get later on might outweigh whatever. Yeah. We may be able to offset these things later on by because there are other current coins and stuff that are more environmentally friendly that do the trade actual, you know, thing, you know, assets and stuff of value. So let me clarify that. I don't, I don't and I didn't mean to pick on you and like, you oh, no. Bitcoin polluter, you no, and all no, that, no, you know. No, 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 so no. now, um, it, and I think that's that's one reason why I prefer other tokens as well, you know, like Ethereum. And mm -hmm. so he, here, here's a little bit more behind the scenes. Uh, Bitcoin is a proof of work coin. So miners have to do the work on the ledger, right? Think of it like a bank ledger. Yeah. As transactions happen, those have to be calculated, um, math problem solved. Uh, so that's proof of work. So when they do a, uh, the their computer systems do the work on a block of Bitcoin, uh, they get paid out for that. Yeah, proof of work versus what Ethereum is switching to, and what Cardano currently is, and what most of the modern coins are switching to is proof of stake. So instead of you doing the work, which is processor intensive, it's proof of stake, which is proof of ownership. So by holding the coins, then uh, that that is the uh, the computing power behind it. So it's, it's way more energy efficient. Than so, all right. So, so that, and, and that, I guess, Andrew was your point when I was doing my overly broad humorous introduction into this topic is that we can't lump in all cryptocurrencies together because there are different energy consumptions for the creation and, and worth of this. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that okay. was, yeah. Cause I wanted to fair to, 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 to Corey on that. Um, and I think that is it because the proof of stake is interesting because then one of the people, one of the reasons for justifying the value of Bitcoin is the idea of well, the idea of the system itself is this value, the ability to, be able to move assets back and forth. Because people go like, well, what's you know, gold theoretically has some sort of value in the industrial and you know, decorative stuff. And if it did, the arg one argument for Bitcoin is like because the, the system is worth trillions because of the ability to move stuff back and forth. When you get to proof of stake, you get you can say yes. The system has its value, plus we don't have that trade off of energy consumption, et cetera. Yep. But that's fair. Yeah. And so, 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 uh, uh, Andrew, are you, uh, I know that one of the earliest conversations I had with you about Bitcoin and, and just crypto in general was the question of like, well, what, what value does it represent? Like, like that was a, that was, that was an, an, an initial question that, that I think both of us had was uh like, like what 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 is it what is it representing and why does it have value beyond the fact that people just say it has value i i mean i've increasingly won over to the idea that merely having a system even if it's artificial that makes it easy that if people 
like in government to have this idea of trust in it and the idea that you can borrow, you know, it has future value. And the idea is the more we use a system to move things back and forth, the value is in its system itself, which yeah. is a little bit voodoo for me, but I'm seeing that happen in front of me. So you have to believe it. You 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 have to buy into it because it has existed and and people seem to be believe in the system and that is worth whatever it's, money's put into it. Yeah, Corey, what's Bitcoin at right now? Uh, well, it it just been a big dip, but it was up to sixty five thousand dollars per coin. Now it's about fifty five, but I haven't checked but in a couple hours. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember people, economists, trying to say. I mean, I was I like I I've been on the record for like writing essay like seven years ago about my frustration with it, loving the idea of crypto and blockchain and stuff. My frustration with so I've been this kind of like eh, Bitcoin drives me nuts. But I've been watching. And I, I kept thinking, oh, well, other people will see this, and like, no, people saw value I didn't see. And I remember economists predicting like, well, maybe the natural ceiling of Bitcoin will be the total cost of energy to produce it. That didn't happen. Yeah, you know, it just went right past that. So. Yeah, whatever, whether or not I believe in it, it's there. It's got the, the money. The, the largest reason why it's taking off right this second is it's a hedge against inflation. So, you know, inflation is somewhere the uh, the government came out and said like 7% right now. Uh, the the smarter money is saying closer to 15 to 25 by some of the big investors. And so like uh, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, she says if, if, if a asset will not uh, – uh, produce 25% growth each year, she's not interested because she's got to beat uh, inflation. Inflation, right? And so Bitcoin, there is no inflation. It, it, there's a limited supply, and that, that supply is, is capped, right? And, most, and some of that supply has already been uh, lost. So it, it, there's a <laughs> tiny amount, right? And so here's an example. So Bitcoin, you've, you've seen Bitcoin go through these cycles of making lots of money and then losing lots of money, right? Yeah. And that's because Bitcoin goes through a four-year cycle. So when they, whoever developed it, uh, they d they've developed it where every four years, the amount of coins you get by solving one of the uh, uh, math problems, yeah. you get uh, a certain amount of coins. Every four years, that number gets cut in half and the problem gets harder. So last year before this big run you've seen, uh, it was 1,800 coins per day that was produced in the world. Uh, then it got cut to 900. So only currently only about 900 uh, Bitcoins are being produced per day. Institutions like Tesla, you're going to hear Walmart come out and announce theirs probably in May. Uh, big, big, huge uh, grayscale trusts. All these companies are buying in. Uh, companies are buying over 2,000 coins per day. Right, so two thousand are being sold to institutions, but only nine hundred or nine hundred are being uh, mined, produced. Yeah. So, so you have isn't this. The, Go ahead. Yeah, is the total number they'll be able to produce like twenty three million or 20, something? Twenty 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 one, and we're currently at eighteen. Okay. And so in twenty forty ish, uh, that's when the last Bitcoin will be mined, unless te technically they could change the code, but you'd need more than fifty percent because it's decentralized, right? So there's no organization yeah. that's running this. So the whole Everybody who holds holds Bitcoin gets a basically a vote on this. So it would need more than fifty percent of Bitcoin owners to vote for more coins coins to be created, which can't happen. There's it's too many. Yeah, you know, there's no way that would ever happen. So Bitcoin is, for the most part, locked. I think the only thing that could get that kind of movement is if something like uh that there was a problem with the code itself, you know, or quantum computing came around and we needed to modify it for that, then it could be changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Corey, a lot of people watch this and they have this, they hear about this escalating price and it's getting higher and higher mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. have this sort of fear of missing out, like, oh my gosh, I should get on this or oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you, what is your thought on that? Um, so if you are going to get into crypto and this is not financial advice, this is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you noted have, financial advice yes. program after things, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so you do have a small window if you're going to get in on this run. So uh, price guesstimates. So right now we're at about let's say sixty thousand. Um, the low end guesses are that we're going to get to about a hundred thousand dollars per coin on the high end, realistic high end, somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars per coin. And that's going to happen by September, end of September, maybe October at the latest. 
because of the cycles. Each cycle, every four-year cycle has been very predictable. And so this one, it looks like the end of September will be the end of the, this Bitcoin run. So if you're getting in, the earlier the better, because as it gets higher and higher, your risk gets much more dangerous. Because if you're buying in at $150,000 a coin, yes, you could still double your money, but man, you're buying at the top, right? It's going to be a hard road to the top. <laughs> and also it's like, there is a top yes, in that, yes. like there's now, going to end. Yes. There's going to be an end point for this coin. Yes. There, there's, eventually. there's arguments that we could be in a Bitcoin super cycle. And if Walmart and all these other companies buy in that we get uh, to a level of dollars in it that it would be hard for it to retrace. In, yeah. In the past, every cycle, it's dropped about 80 uh, to 90%. Um, in value, I think it's eighty-seven percent in value, and all the altcoins, other coins besides Bitcoin, is falls about ninety-seven percent. So this time they're thinking like maybe it'll only drop sixty or seventy percent. So right? so so is the point to buy the dip? Yes. So so here's here's my game plan, which is bought in uh, earlier this year. Yeah. Trying to make the run up, try to time the top decently, take a, a dollar cost average out. So if you look at the curve. I will be buying or selling at, you know, at the top going up the mountain and yeah. then back down the, the side and then hopefully double my money, triple my money, 10 X my money, who knows, right? Come out with any positive money, hold that for, let's say a year, a year and a half in regular fiat currency or real estate or anything yeah. else. And then when the market truly hits its low, probably a year from now, a year and a half from now, that's when I'll start buying back into the trustworthy coins that will be around like Cardano, Ethereum. Bitcoin. So you're saying get out of Bitcoin. Oh, this, 100%. this is the time to get out of yes. Bitcoin. Now, there, there, I may leave a very small amount. So let's say uh, 10, 10% at most, um, just so I have exposure to it. Yeah. Right. So just in case something it doesn't go down or if it stays at a, at a decent price. Yeah. Also, just to, as a hedge against uh, inflation or stock market crashes. So um, I will keep some of that money in there. But September will probably be the roughly September will probably be uh, where you start to get real scared. So you're saying point. buy now, sell in September. Yes. Yes. Um, and then all of your all, money, your mortgage, yes. like, Take out all the you money. know, no. everything, <laughs> your children, entertainment uh, future. And, yeah. But you'll see Bitcoin start to tail off in end of September, most likely. And then you will start to see all the altcoins, the Ethereum's, the Cardano's, V chains, NFTs, all the other, uh, projects. So you're saying those will climb. So you're saying buy like if you really want to be galaxy brain, like buying some of the altcoins now would yes. be. I, I am me personally. I am heavy in altcoins, light in Bitcoin because Bitcoin will do very good. But Bitcoin from here has potential of doubling to maybe five X my other coins that I hold Cardano, uh, even Ethereum and then V chain like V chains already tripled for me. Yeah. Right. Uh, actually, probably quadruple. Oh, what about that Doge? Doge. Everybody, okay, everybody Doge. loves the Doge I have, I have, to the moon. Elon have, Musk can't stop th tweeting th about me, it. Let me. Uh, did that answer your question, uh, Andrew? Yeah. And that... I, let me just give an alternate, just to take for other people to think about is. Yes. I realized, I I got very lucky because back in the early two thousands, I bought a bunch of Apple stock, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I didn't under i'd read books like i read benjamin graham intelligent investor and all this and i was trying to understand i didn't quite understand it's between an investor and a trader and it's a distinction that's not really made and i remember as i watched it climb 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 and i'm like oh should i sell and i sold a lot of it off because and it worked out well and i've lived most of my life most of my bills have been paid through through investing through my adult life um and i never thought of myself as an investor but it was just sort of the way that it worked out i realized i did not have the temperament to be a trader and I realized I was better off finding a company that I believed in. I understood it better than the analysts on TV and just investing in that and staying with it. Cause I don't, I don't can't handle the anxiety of like, Oh, should I sell? Should I trade? Somebody told me this, whatever I've, whenever I've done that with small amounts, whatever, I've always gotten burned in the long run. And so if you're listening to this and you're like, should I get in this, whatever? I'm like, my attitude is like, you should definitely be investing in something, whether it's this or something else. You should be putting your money somewhere where it will grow. I, I tend to be, I understand stocks. I understand companies. I, my, I'm very, been very, very lucky. And I've been very, very lucky in my life because I think lucky. And also I probably by on a process, it's worked out really well for me. I don't know that. Like I, I, when it comes to crypto and stuff, like 
I believe the overall, it's like the internet in the early 90s. I believed in it, but I, if you ask me, oh, who's going to win? Was it going to be Hotwire? Is it going to be Beans? You know, <laughs> right. Is it going to be GeoCities? I don't know. There are going to be some people are going to still be around, and you know, and I I don't know. So if you're feeling a bit of FOMO, I'm like, don't panic. Don't yeah. you don't have to. It's not for sometimes. It's not worth the stress. Like every one of my friends who were day trading in the '90s and they were online gambling, they went from day trading to online gambling and all that. Not one of them I knew, you know, a, ten years later had had made a million dollars from this. I do know Bitcoin millionaires, and I do know this. So I know that exists and that's a real thing, but it is a temperament. Don't worry if it's not you. You can still do well. Yeah, Bitcoin and all the coins are, uh, it's still very early on. So it is still very, very much more dangerous than buying Apple. Yeah. For sure. So yeah, be very careful if you decide. To There's no, un the, 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 the underpinning fundamentals are, are a lot more murky. Yes. And uh, use your stop losses. Yeah. Recommendation. Um, Dogecoin. Yeah, and he oh, go ahead, Andrew. Oh, yeah, please, please. I'm sorry. Go oh, uh, Dogecoin. So thoughts on Dogecoin. Um, Dogecoin was created as a meme, as a joke. So the, the guy who created it, created it as literally a joke. It, it was yeah. in a wave of the Bitcoin. It was like, oh, this would be funny. And well, like a good meme, it stuck around. Yeah. Um, so investing in it, um, man, you got to be real careful because it is an inflationary token. So every time, a, anytime it gets used, it creates more tokens. So... It's it's crazy runaway inflation um, versus like Bitcoin and all the others have limited supply. And so it'll never be a great store of value um, unless the uh, the popularity of the meme keeps going. Right. So it's so the as funnier, it, literally the funnier Dogecoin gets, <laughs> the more valuable correct. it becomes. Correct. So, so not, if it becomes the funniest joke on the yes. planet, then everybody who bought it yeah. gets rich. Yes. So all the all the the crypto people I know don't invest in it. Now they will trade some of it or they will do a scratch off lotto ticket and put three hundred dollars. Like well, one of the guys I follow lost Andrew, I think. Um, I think that might be Andrew's incoming. Yeah, it's Andrew's oh, camera yeah, just Andrew's gave camera. out. I gotcha. yeah. Go ahead, Corey. Oh, there we go. Um, the uh, like one guy I know who put three hundred dollars in back a year ago, and now it's sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> right? So, like, it's a great scratch off lotto ticket, I suppose. Um, and I know several people that would. Uh, for the longest time, it was in a very uh, stagnant period in between. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, five cents and nine cents. So anytime it hit nine cents, you'd sell it. Anytime it hit five, you'd buy it. And yeah. You just play play the cycles, but it's super super dangerous. And so um, I don't currently hold any, and I do not feel bad for missing out on that because that's a it's a fun rocket. But man, the the uh, the the podcaster PFT commenter who uh, when when the latest big spike happened, uh, uh, I think tweeted. Uh, Dogecoin, the beautiful story of a bunch of people who didn't understand a joke but spent money to be a part of it and wound up owning the moon. <laughs> yes. Oh, speaking, yeah. speaking of moon, my favorite current thing is, and this is a brushwood thing I want to, I was going to bring up to him at some point in time. Uh, there's all these uh, Ponzi scheme tokens out there now that's all over like TikTok and Facebook. Ponzi and, scheme token. Let yes. me buy some of these. Yeah. Those sound, it's, I like, like this. My favorite one. Oh, it's so good. The marketing is just so good. Uh, it's called Safe Moon, and I just love the name because yeah. the moon. You know, of course, everybody safe. Going safe is the, the moon. Yes, your safe. money is as safe as the moon yes, showing up exactly, every night. Exactly, and and it's it's all these TikTokers and everybody else who has any sort of influencing platform. They get they buy into it somehow, get fooled, get trapped, need to see a return, so they start promoting it like crazy, and then getting everybody else to promote it. So it's like any stream you watch, any YouTube, whatever. If it's a a uh, crypto channel all in the chat is nothing but safe moon. Check out safe moon, safe moon to the moon. Yeah. It's like all these pot. And then there's like, there's a, mm. uh, Oh gosh, I can't remember some of the other tokens, but it's all, all moon, you know, it's rocket moon and all uh, these. So it's all, it's me. Yes. Because, it's all me to the moon and, and, yep. and the rocket and everything. Yes. That's like, that's a part of this, like wall street bets, crypto yes. meme culture. Yep. It, it, Corey, and go back to the thing you said, which I think is very important. You didn't feel upset that you missed out on. Oh no. No, 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 no. That's you know. too. That's too dangerous, man. Like, uh, um, for me, anyways. Like, it. Yes, it could have been a cool ride to make that kind of money. But there's, there's plenty of safer money in 
crypto. You know, like actually do the research on the projects that you like, um, that actually has good teams working behind it. Like one of the ones I mentioned earlier uh, in Weird Things was Theta. So Theta is a, you'd think YouTube, except decentralized and tokenized. But the creators are the the uh, uh, the team who who uh, help advise Theta is the creator of YouTube and the creator of Twitch. So yeah, that's a project that you should probably pay attention to if you're looking at investing. You know, so like try to do the research on the tokens and see if they actually have a a use case. So there's there's no tokens that I hold. I think I hold 18 or 19 different individual coins, and all of them I believe in whether they will succeed or not i yeah. don't know it kind of feels like that that is also a very important thing to look out for even more so than stocks because you know a, a company can get new leadership it can be acquired or acquire something else mm -hmm. or or be a beneficiary of a changing market whereas crypto as soon as that that ship is out there in in the ocean, mm -hmm. it's gonna sail or sink based on its construction on land. Yep. And so, what you want is for these things to be well thought out, well constructed, and and then you see how the world plays with them. I I had a the only time I bought Doge just for the joke because I'm like yeah. I want to be part of this joke and and but I the only other one I bought was uh, I had a trainer. It was just like. You gotta buy Litecoin. Got to, and I'm like, oh, this yeah. is bullshit. I, I think these things never work out. I don't trust anything. By the time you're telling me this, whatever. And then he had a friend that was one of the people involved in it, whatever. I'm like, all right, I will buy like a thousand dollars of it just to just so you'll shut up and I'll say I bought something. Um, and I watched it go down, and I'm like, well, of course, this is what happens. This is why I don't do big investments in this sort of stuff, whatever, like this. But then it made money. <laughs> you know, yeah. Eventually, mm -hmm. not much, but it was one of these sort of funny things where it's like, I, and I just kept it because I think a lot of I just to keep this as a cautionary tale. Why I shouldn't do it? I'm like, oh, it went up. Do you, like, do you oh. still have it? Yeah, I still have it. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Because that's, yeah. depending on where you bought it, that's all of a sudden some pretty good money. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll hold on to I, I bought a share of Bed Bath & Beyond and GameStop just to share each just to like, just so it's in my feed and I watch it, you know. Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people buy this stuff. They're just gonna, there's, you're going to get the stubborn people who are just going to keep stuff in their portfolio forever until a company goes bankrupt, too. Yeah, and the thing sure. about these coins is they don't. Yeah. It, it, like Litecoin is pretty interesting because it's on uh, PayPal. So PayPal actually created uh, their crypto payment services. So uh, they, I think they have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, maybe one other. But basically, uh, you can go buy crypto on PayPal and then spend it at retailers like scam stuff but brian would never know you were spending bitcoin at his store because it goes through yeah. PayPal. yeah yeah you just you just never notice paypal handles the, the yeah. payment mm -hmm. there yep cool well that this point. was this was a good uh a good a good crypto uh uh, uh breakdown Corey. thank yeah. you so much yeah thanks for letting me chat about it so. all right everybody's uh, favorite crypto coins uh uh, uh brian go Coin, coin. <laughs> no, it's ku pronounced ku coin. Ku coin. Ku coin. Andrew, your favorite coin. Your pick. Your pick for coins. Uh, this one right here. That There's only was one of my it. coin, and that's my coin it's too. It's one trillion dollars. That's my signed coin. Uh, cool. I mean, I guess do we do we want a two picks? And uh. <laughs> I don't really have anything else that I've outside of a uh, uh, Jesse Singles uh, new book, um, uh, The Quick Fix, where he's sort of uh, it's wild. Over the years, we've talked about a lot of different um, uh, ideas that have come on in and uh, that seem to get popular, and he sort of just destroys them one at a time. Everything from uh, power poses, which we covered on hacking the system to uh, 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 to self-esteem stuff to all this other stuff it's 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 really wild I, um, I I listened to his first chapter on on blocked and reported and I liked the idea of a whole book just trashing modern uh, awful research and scientism he's patient the entire time but also unrelenting the entire time. Yeah. Uh, I, I, to be honest, if you want to get a taste of it, um, listen to uh, the the Reason interview with uh, Nick Gillespie, where he talks to him uh, uh, through that stuff. I'm actually halfway through that as well right now. Cool. But, but I'm enjoying that quite a bit. 
Uh, two things. One, Nick Gillespie retweeted, uh, retweeted, I found out that if you look at the watermark on a $20 bill, it looks like Evil Knievel. Um, <laughs> nice. Two, it, I put a thing on Twitter, like, it is uncanny. It's uncanny, Evil Knievel. But then the power posting, I was doing a, a lecture in a class, and I'm sitting there, and the teacher said, as we learned last week about how the utility of power poses and how you should use this, and, you know, the research had come out. I'm, like, sitting there, like, do I address this right well, or... and, and uh, for, for those who don't know like um one of the three co-authors of the story has flat out said hey uh this was a single test involving people over a game where they were handed two dollars and asked would you like to roll some dice and maybe get four dollars um <laughs> <laughs> and and also like like if uh, the 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 economic I, I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm I'm not, I'm not super up on what power buzz are if you already uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the quite, two sentence version quite literally do, do me a favor right now with me sit up straight put your arms on your side pretend you're Superman take a deep breath in <sighs> theoretically you now have more testosterone and will make more bold irrational decisions which as we all know is how success comes. That is the entire story of power posing. I mean, uh, and, and, I mean, and, to, and we to, know to, this because of a test where people were given two dollars, yeah, and then asked, "Okay, either power pose or don't power pose. Do you want to gamble with that money? Yeah. And if you did want to gamble with that money, then that proved that power posing made you better." Explains Peter Pan, to be honest. Yeah. Big power. Pose. There was a yeah uh, a big TED talk on that. And I think there's actually like a disclaimer now about huh? some of these on TED. Some of these findings present talk have been referenced in ongoing debate among social scientists about robustness and reproducibility. Cough, cough. Um, it is neither robust nor re reproducible. And that, and that, that, that was the initial, the initial uh, uh, chapter uh, of, of the, the Jesse. Is it single or signal? Uh, I, th I think it's single. S-I-N-G-A-L. Okay. Single. So a single, okay, yeah, single, single. Uh, 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 so, uh, in 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 that opening chapter, it talks a lot about like the crisis of reproducibility and 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 the the problem in terms of junk science and how that has permeated that like with the twin element of our modern world that latches on to any kind of like well, science says now we should all dance with eggs in our shoes. Like, not only is it is is that run rampant but also we have a problem with reproducibility which means right. a lot of random stuff runs amok at least that that's the point of the book but I'm, I'm i'm pumped to read it andrew your pick you know i'm a big fan of this company that produces these delightful products and uh, i just got another one the other day it's pretty damn cool Ooh, I highly recommend them. that's the labyrinth I love, I love my puzzles and uh, I love my puzzle boxes, and so it was a delight to get a big puzzle box I, delivered I, to my I, door. I'm terrified to accidentally reveal too much, but but um, it's haunted. Uh, <laughs> but but we we have implied that there are multiple ways to open it, and I would imagine that like a couple of them you figured out instantly. Uh, uh, have you figured out all three ways, or um? No, I, I didn't read the instructions. I just opened it when I got it, and I'm cool. I didn't realize there are other ways, but now I know. I have something to look forward to now because uh, – um, and, and, oh, Okay, well, and, and, and then there's also like – uh, so, so if you have opened it, you know there's a golden ticket uh, that – and it's pretty apparent when you flip it over, there's a little something-something on the golden ticket that leads to another something-something that you can keep on rabbit-holing all the way down on. Uh, it's yeah, it's it is. I I love what you guys are doing with these things. Like I've been collecting like puzzles lately. That's been kind of like my thing. And so uh, I love that my friend is making this kind of stuff, and you know, he's got a team that's helping him do this. I think it's just awesome. Well, it, it, and awesome. it's it's, it's a, so weird because like I don't even know how to talk about it without accidentally maybe taking something away from you. <laughs> but yeah. but I'm glad you enjoyed it though. Yeah, very much. So check out scamstuff.com. Check out the other stuff there. What's neat about these kinds of gifts is that you get it and then you just leave it out on a desk or something for somebody else to find and explore. And then you get to watch that experience again.
And, I have and, a friend that I like I like to give puzzles to though, but he'll he'll go vanish to the bathroom and mysteriously solve it a minute later. <laughs> he just comes back suddenly enlightened uh, uh, so for yeah. some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Weird. Uh, all right. My pick is a new podcast series from ABC audio called in plain sight. Uh, it is a series about lady bird Johnson. Obviously I'm a political nerd and uh, lady bird Johnson kept like her husband, uh, a series of audio diaries. And so there's a lot of lady bird Johnson in her own voice. What the, uh, I'm only an episode in, but what the podcast uh, makes a point to say is how involved in her husband's career uh, she was. And that was something that I actually found in my research for raise the dead 1964 that, uh, you know, there's a lot of LBJ's recorded calls where he's getting very pointed and specific advice in the way that like you would normally hear from like a campaign manager uh, to a candidate about like, how LBJ like delivered a speech and his body posture and, and, and uh, whether or not he ummed and awed too much. Like they were very much a team. They very much worked in tandem and uh, I'm excited to get through the rest of it. It's a ABC audio in plain sight. Hmm. Corey. Yes. Um, I have uh, a couple tips, I suppose. So one is if you do get into crypto, and you do go to a, a exchange like Coinbase, um, look at using Coinbase Pro instead of regular Coinbase. Coinbase Pro is very pretty, um, but you have much less options, and they charge you uh, exorbitant fees. If you use so wait, Pro, do use it or don't, don't use Don't use don't Coinbase. Don't use Coinbase Pro. No, use Coinbase Pro. Okay. Don't use regular Coinbase. Don't use regular so, Coinbase. Yes, use Coinbase Pro. Gotcha. Coinbase Pro has more features, more charting, and also like a tenth of the fees. So like much cheaper to trade. So you wind up saving money. I, I, I presume if it's Pro, you pay up front. Nope. No. It doesn't cost anything. No. It's just another it's, thing? Yes, what they do is they, they give you more stuff for the, 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 uh, coin, the regular Coinbase. They restrict you, and for that... They charge you a bunch. But it's free. Yes. All these are free until you decide to do something like uh, buy a coin, there's a fee, or sell a coin, gotcha. there's a fee. Uh, on Coinbase, there is way higher fees, transaction costs. On Coinbase Pro, which is exactly the same thing, it's Is it just, the same site, or is it a different site? Um, it's the same URL. One, one, one is pro.coinbase.com, and the other one is coinbase.com. And then there's an app. For each, add that so to the list of things that I don't understand <laughs> about pro. crypto. You, use pro if you do it. Uh, the other thing is, is I uh, like your words, put, uh, your uh, crazy words, Magic Man. Yes, sure. Put Coinbase your money pro. in a paper bag. Yes, in a coffee the can under the moon. The, the other thing is uh, risk management. Uh, please use risk management if you actually trade any of this, so you don't lose all your money. Cool. Explain to me risk management um, in two words, words or less. Oh, two, two words might be tough. You have to give me a second on, on two words. And you're <laughs> over. So <laughs> it's uh, been don't... after. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that worked. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's a spell anyone can say. Wow, holy moly, moly. <laughs> I was waiting for everybody to run over you, and then we all just respected it. <laughs> oh, man. Good times, gang. Good times. Yeah. Oh. All right. Let's see if I hit record. Uh, no, just kidding. That's also, it. I'm hearing a distinct lack of Japanese music. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, get that well, Japanese now I music closed going. It uh, guys, we're going to get off uh, for now, but uh, Brian will be back uh, with Tom. Corey will be gone, though. You, we have a new, a new, new Bryce, right? Who's the new Bryce? I for... like ramen. Yeah. I like tofu. I'm a Japanese pop star. <laughs> there it is. Oh, thank goodness. Will Nailed you it. eat ramen with me <laughs> as we go to ninja school? <laughs> All right, back in two hours. Love you guys. See ya. Love you.